Welcome back to this module on arrays. In this part, we'll cover memory management issues when using dynamic arrays. When memory is allocated on the stack, it's cleaned up when the stack frames are removed. However, memory on the heap is not automatically cleaned up when it is no longer needed. Instead, in C, it's your responsibility to clean up dynamically allocated memory when you are done using it. This is known as memory management. Failure to do proper memory management can lead to memory leaks, in which you waste more and more memory, potentially leading to reduced performance or even illegal memory accesses or segmentation faults, fatal to your program. When we say clean up memory, we mean free it up by releasing it back to the operating system so that it can be reused by your program or other programs on the system. The standard library provides the free function to do this. It's pretty simple. It takes a single argument, the pointer to the dynamically allocated memory that you want to free, Let's take a look at a demonstration. Here I've got the malloc demonstration from before. Once we're done using it, we can call free, passing it the pointer to the array that we dynamically allocated. And it's simple as that. Functionally, there's no difference here. The memory will be freed up and returned back to the operating system when the program terminates anyway. But if we had a long running program, the continuously allocated memory, we would need to ensure that we free it up once we're done using it. The basic usage of malloc and free is pretty straightforward. However, there are many pitfalls to avoid. Once you free memory, you cannot access its contents or use it further. Calling free puts the memory back into the available pool so that either your program can reuse it or it can get released back to the operating system for use by other programs. However, your pointer still points to the freed memory block. It's best to reassign the variable after you've freed it, otherwise you risk what's known as a dangling pointer. Let's take a look at what this means. Before we free the pointer, let's get its memory address. After we free the pointer, let's see where it points to. It's still pointing to that memory address. However, since we freed it up, it doesn't necessarily belong to us anymore. Any attempts to access that memory may lead to a segmentation fault, an undefined behavior. Instead, it's best practice to reassign your pointer to null. Another issue with memory management is exactly who owns a chunk of memory. This is important because ownership implies responsibility. If a section of code owns a chunk of memory, it's responsible for its management and its release when it's no longer needed. For example, stack frames are owned by the program or function, so that the program is responsible for cleaning them up, which happens automatically. If a function calls malloc, it is responsible for the memory that malloc returns. However, ownership may be transferred between functions. For example, malloc itself allocates memory. By returning a pointer to it, it implicitly transfers ownership to the calling function. Ultimately, this is a design issue, but generally, only free memory in a function that owns that memory. Don't free memory before you're done using it. And don't free memory that has already been freed. Doing any of these things will likely lead to a segmentation fault or other issues. Finally, the most common issue when dealing with memory management are memory leaks. This happens when you fail to properly clean up memory. A program could continue to hold on to memory that it no longer is using. Or even worse, references to dynamic memory could be lost, meaning that the memory cannot be properly freed until the program terminates. Memory leaks mean that a program will continue to take more and more resources as it runs. Performance could potentially degrade, or even take the whole system down with it. Let's take a look at a demonstration. 
Here's a program that goes into an infinite loop. On each iteration, it allocates 10 million integers, or about 40 megabytes. We keep track of a running total, and we also set the first and the last element to ensure that the array is actually used. We print out our running total, and then we pause the execution for one second. This is so that we can actually see the progress. The whole process repeats until we kill the program. Now this is telling me how much memory it allocates. I'm going to restart the program. Suppressing the output. And I'm going to run it in the background so that I can run a utility called top. To see how many resources it's taking. Every few seconds, it jumps up about 40 megabytes. The actual amount of physical memory that it's using is limited to about 1.4 megabytes. But the amount of virtual memory that it's using continues to grow. Eventually, this will affect the performance of the system. Let's go ahead and stop the process by killing it. And now it's gone. For small, ephemeral, or short-lived programs, this is not that big of a deal. But if you've got long-running processes, you can see how this might be a big issue.